Hey, everyone. I'm Chris. This is Vivian. Hi. Um, we work for Lyft. Uh, we're the other transportation company open sourcing some certificate stuff this week. So um, we're excited to talk to you about um, what we've been doing. And um, so we'll kind of tell you about our project and what we've been doing. SSH. All right. So today we're going to be talking about better SSH management with ephemeral keys, uh, aka how we made SSH access a lot better at Lyft. Uh, one second. Technical. All right. So um, we're going to start off talking about uh, how we used to do SSH management at Lyft. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about Netflix's Bless and how um, Netflix uses Bless for their SSH access um, in their infrastructure. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how we use uh, we use and adapted Netflix's Bless for our infrastructure and our purposes. Um, uh, followed by uh, talking about how we're running our Lambda and client, um, how we're running the Lambda in our AWS infrastructure and how we um, run the client on the engineer's laptops. Uh, and then uh, we'll briefly talk about the shortcomings that we uh, came up with and um, how we plan had plans to fix them. All right, so what we did at Lyft before. Um, during onboarding, IT would provision laptops uh, they would set them up before the engineer starts at Lyft. So um, one of the pro things I had to do in the process was generate a private and public key SSH pair, uh, SSH pair for the engineer. So this was done by IT, not the engineer. Um, they would generate the key, store the private key in the .ssh folder as usual, and then they'd put the public key in a file um, that it was salt managed, and this would um, bring the public key into the authorized keys of the user on every host on our fleet using salt management. So this file looks a little bit like this. It's a YAML file, um, and it has a few properties such as my name, my email, and most importantly, my public key. Um, so this file was um, a file that's stored in a Git repository, and it uses, it's used in salt management, it's run, and um, the data in it is used to uh, put authorized keys into all of the instances uh, on our fleet. Oh, sorry. Okay, so uh, that worked well for, uh, for a while. Um, so we had you. Uh, engineers who had laptops that already had the SSH key on them, uh, they would be able to SSH right from day one uh, using the private key that was provisioned to them into any of the instances on our fleet. Uh, so this was good, it was functional, uh, but there were a few problems with it. So firstly, uh, like I said, the engineer themselves didn't um, make their own key. This was done by IT. Uh, so this isn't great because someone else potentially knows your private key and we had to make sure that IT followed the right process to generate a secure enough private key, uh, SSH key pair, uh, and make sure that this uh, process was secure enough, uh, which we couldn't because we, we couldn't have the certainty that uh, that key wasn't stored somewhere else during the process. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, the process was prone to human error. So like I said, the public key had to be copied onto this uh, user's YAML file every time someone was on, onboarded. And if, this, um, if there was a typo in it, then there'd be a typo in the authorized keys. And then we'd have to redeploy this uh, salt management to all our fleet every time there was an error. And this deploy process could take anywhere between 20 to 60 minutes because it had to run on all our instances. So um, this wasn't the greatest process for rotating a key. A key. Um, and th further, uh, furthermore, because of this slow rotation process, if a key was compromised, so for example, if the um, engineer's laptop was stolen, then this would, um, this would result in having to rotate the key, which is the same deploy process, uh, which means that a malicious user could have up to 20, uh, could have up to an hour um, with the key and have access, SSH access to our instances like that. Uh, so that's not great. 
Uh, finally, uh, this process doesn't have two-factor authentication, which means that um, once someone has the private key, that's it. They have SSH instance, uh, SSH access into all our instances. Uh, so um, there's that. That's um, not the greatest process. Okay, so uh, introducing Netflix is blessed. So Netflix recently, maybe not so recently anymore, but they open sourced a, um, their AWS Lambda Bless. Um, so Bless is an AWS Lambda, it stands for uh, Bastion's Lambda Ephemeral SSH Service. And basically it's an AWS Lambda that uh, issues SSH certificates to its Bastion. Uh, in case you don't know, AWS Lambda is basically serverless computation. Um, what we would do is we would upload Python code to AWS Lambda, um, which would have some sort of handler like uh, the Lambda handler function. Um, when the Lambda is invoked, uh, it can be invoked with a payload. This payload is passed to this Lambda handler function. The Lambda handler does computation, and then it out can output a JSON response. Um, so in the case of Bless, the input, the payload, would be a public key. Um, the computation would be a CA signing this key, and then the output uh, would be a uh, certificate, certificate that could be used for SSH. Um, a cool thing that we get, we get for free with Lambda is that we can use AWS IAM permissions to control who can invoke the Lambda. So in the case of uh, Netflix, the Bastion can invoke the Lambda, and we can make it so that the, only the Bastion can invoke the Lambda and nobody else can do it. Okay, so uh, the output, like I said, of the Lambda is a SSH certificate. Uh, if you're not sure what an SSH certificate is, it's basically a certificate signed by a CA um, signing the public key, an SSH public key. Um, a, SSH, a server can be co configured um, to trust a list of CA fingerprints. So, for example, in Netflix's infrastructure, they probably have a um, list of, a list of uh, Blessed Lambda CEAs and the fingerprints on every machine, and anyone who presents a certificate that with, the with a fingerprint that matches a CA fingerprint that they trust will be granted access. The cool thing about um, certificates, uh, its advantages over public key, is that you can specify a couple things. So, for example, you can specify the principles, um, for example, uh, who, which is who um, is using the certificate. So, you can, for example, uh, narrow that down to just Vivian Ho, only Vivian Ho can use the certificate, only the Bastion can use the certificate. Uh, you can specify the valid to and valid from dates, and that makes, um, that gives you the option to issue short-lived certificates. So um, in Netflix's case, they only, uh, they only issue two certificates that uh, last for two minutes. After that, you'd have to call the Lambda again. Uh, we can also specify we can also specify the IP addresses from where you can SSH uh, using the certificate. Um, so you can specify where you can SSH from. And you can also specify a com bunch of other principles and features. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so briefly how the Lambda works. Um, the Lambda is in the middle of this diagram. And inside the Lambda it has the uh, CA. Uh, the CA has a private key, uh, it's password protected, and the password is stored with the Lambda. But the thing that makes it so that only the Lambda can, in, can sign with the CA is that the password is encrypted using KMS. Um, and the KMS key is protected using IAM permissions such that only the blessed Lambda can decrypt with the um, KMS key. So, the, um, so that means that only the Blessed Lambda has access to decrypting the password and using that password to sign. Um, so, as you can see, the user on the Bastion can request a certificate. Um, it will give the, its public key to the Lambda. The Lambda then decrypts the uh, password using KMS, uses this password and this private key to sign the public key, return a cert back to the Bastion, and then the Bastion can use this cert to SSH into any instance on the infrastructure. All right, so uh, like I said, um, see the, uh, there's many good properties to using SSH certificates, such as the 
I've yet to specify the principles, the source IP addresses, the um, uh, the uh, valid to and valid from dates, and a bunch of other principles. Uh, so those all come for free. Like those are all options you can have with the SSH certificate. Um, you can also we can we can also use IAM policy to. Um, prevent anyone from invoking the lambda except for the bastion, and also again, IAM policy is used to ensure that only the bastion can de decrypt with the KM, um, with the KMS key to get the password for it. Um, uh, la the AWS lambda is running on a separate security account, which um, is the standard AD uh, security practice in AWS. Because um, if you run on a separate account, it's less. Um, it's much harder to escalate a privilege in another account up to that account. Uh, so uh, running, thing, running sensitive things in, such as the Lambda in a separate, a separate account is um, something that Netflix does, and so do, um, we, do, we do the same thing with our Lambda. Um, yeah, and um, this, this, uh, this process is a win for us because um, all, all we need to do is provide a list of trusted CA fingerprints to, the, um, to each of the instances in our fleet, which is just a one-liner modification to the SSHD config. Um, so we don't need to install any PAM modules or anything, uh, which is something that we might have had to do if we considered other, um, other options, such as using Duo or um, yeah, other uh, Duo for um, MFA. OK, so that was Netflix's Bless. Um, Lyft's Bless is similar to uh, Netflix's Bless. We just adopted it for our purposes. So um, with our Bless, we just made it bastionless, um, such that every engineer can invoke it. So like I said, Lyft's Bless is really Lyft's Less. There is no bastion. Um, the, any engineer has the permission to invoke the Lambda. and um, we use KMS auth to um, we use KMS auth to uh, mint tokens for the engineers that can uh, authenticate the user. All right, so a bit briefly, how our um, Bless client uh, Bless works. It's a little bit more involved than um, Netflix's Bless. Um, the user, not the bastion, invokes the lambda. Um, but before it, before it invokes the lambda, it actually um, gen get, generates a KMS auth token, and I'll go into a little bit more about what that involves later, but it generates this KMS auth token which can uh, validate the user's identity. Um, so it has this KMS auth token, it passes uh, the KMS auth token along with its public key to the Lambda. The Lambda checks the KMS auth token, valid um, validates that the user is really who they say they are, and then um, only after then it'll do the same thing as the Netflix's Lambda where it um, decrypts the password using KMS, uh, and then signs the, signs the public key, generates a cert, gives it back to the um, user. The user now has a cert, and is able to SSH into our instances. We do have a bastion, but it's more just for EC2 proxying. Um, uh, so, but, so the bastion accepts the certificate, and then all the other fleet instances in our fleet also accept the certificate. So the user is the one with the certificate rather than the bastion. All right, so what is KMS auth? This token that magically um, identifies the user and proves that they are really them. Um, KMS auth is a, uh, Python KMS auth is a library that we open sourced a while back. And basically it uses IAM, permis um, IAM permissions to ensure um, the ver verification of the user who is signing, who's generating the token. So with um, KMS, we can specify the encryption context, and in, KM, um, in IAM permissions for KMS, we can restrict what the um, values for the encryption context can be, depending on the user. So in the case of KMS or to set up a KMS key that works for this, um, you would restrict the from of the encryption context to only be the username of the person. So I would generate a KMS or token, and the only from encryption context I can say, so the only token I can generate on behalf of is myself. I can't, I, it, the from context has to be Vivian Ho, it can't be Chris Dyke for all, for example. So because of that assurance, 
Um, I would sign a, I would get a token. Um, I would say the two contexts would be the best, best lambda, the service that I'm giving a token to. The from context would be me, Vivian Ho, and then um, this token would be sent to the blessed lambda as part of the payload. On the blessed lambda side, I the blessed lambda would be able to decrypt the token and check the encryption context, and it will see it's from v -ho, Vivian Ho, which means that it's definitely from me, from me, and it can have that assurance because of IAM policy. Only I would have been able to mint this token. Um, like I said, uh, in Lyft's Bless, you have to uh, give the KMS store token as part of um, the uh, payload. If you don't give it, then it just doesn't work. Um, Bless, Lyft's Bless validates this KMS store token to ensure that you are really who you say you are. And the process of invoking KMS auth and the process of invoking the Lambda um, both require multi-factor authentication. Um, so in, when the user calls the Lambda on their laptop, they need to type in the six-digit code they get from their phone. Um, otherwise, uh, they wouldn't be able to uh, invoke the Lambda in the first place. Uh, so with these, uh, with these measures, we can be uh, assured that the blessed Lambda is actually being invoked by the person who they say they are. All right, handing over to Chris to talk about the blessed client. A little taller. Um, all right, so uh, obviously this is a little bit more complex. Um, so when we're looking at options, we um, for, for adding two-factor to our SSH authentication, we looked at Duo. We looked at a couple other things, and like you said, you know, we wanted to do something that didn't require PAM modules. We wanted uh, we liked the, a lot of the properties of, of certificates. Uh, but one thing that we had to do was actually have an agent running on the user's laptops um, to actually handle, uh, do this whole process. So uh, that is something that we've open sourced now. Uh, so as of Friday, um, our blessed client is open source. Yay. Um, so you can go there and you can read lots about it. Um, what does this client do? So, um, you know, essentially, sorry, I have to look behind me a lot. Um, so uh, we have the, the agent running on all the developer's laptops. Uh, it invokes the Lambda, so it does that whole process uh, on the diagram, uh, gets k off token, talks to the Lambda, gets a certificate, and then um, injects that certificate into uh, the user's SSH agent, uh, as well as having it on the hard drive. Um, uh, but one of the hard requirements that we had, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about kind of our operational requirements, uh, but one of the things we wanted to do is make sure that um, unless the user is actually putting in their MFA token, um, everything needed to act exactly like normal SSH. Um, our uh, Lyft is very much of a DevOps uh, uh, shop, so all of our developers uh, need to access their hosts uh, just like normal SSH. Uh, if we got in the way, um, they would get uh, very upset with us. So. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, so, so that was a hard requirement for us. Um, so a lot of the trade-offs that um, we're talking through here uh, were done to, to make it easy for our users, even though probably from a security perspective, uh, we, we may have tried to do something different. Um, cool. It's open source. And so please, we would love to. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, we would still love to um, uh, recruit volunteers for that. Uh, but it's also you know, free. It's open source. Uh, so you can go and check it out yourself. All right, so um, the things that we really liked about the certificates, um, again, um, uh, users have to put in their MFA before they actually SSH, which was a huge win for us. Um, uh, we do it every 18 hours, um, so we require you know, kind of that verification of liveness uh, every 18 hours. Um, the certificate is valid for 30 minutes, um, and it's basically the window where um, you know, we have to re-talk to the user, revalidate that the, the user's AWS account is still active. So every 30 minutes, the user uh, talks back to the Lambda uh, and gets a new certificate, uh, and we, we save that certificate for 30 minutes. Um, this is all logged in CloudTrails, which is awesome. And um, yeah, slight modification from the Netflix's Bless. Uh, that, again, is open source. If you look at our fork of Netflix's Bless, um, there's a couple patches there. Um, just very uh, some minor things, the KMS auth uh, being the, the biggest piece there. All right, so um, being a security person, I came to Lyft. Um, like I said, we, we practice DevOps a lot, which meant that we as a security team, we wanted to set this up, uh, but that also means we have to run this. Uh, and we have to be like critical path to engineers SSHing into their, um, into their instances. So uh, that was a challenge. And so as a security person, um, 
it was it was an experience, and uh, so I thought it would we would we'd share some of those with you guys uh, in case you want to run this too. So, number one, um, just running the lambda. You know, it's really easy to say like, hey, we'll go, we'll get this this thing from Netflix, and we'll we'll just run this lambda. Um, it was actually a little bit of a process. So, um, a lot of those uh, lambdas are you know they're serverless, so you have to give AWS everything it needs. So you have to go and you have to like pull down, you have to compile all the Python libraries, uh, uses the cryptography library, which is a native library. You have to get that all compiled up, zipped up into a, a tarball, and then actually upload it to Lambda each time, which will create a new version. Um, uh, we had to build a container to actually go and do that, so every time that we update our libraries, we can just kind of, in our dev environment, build a new set of libraries, tar it up, and uh, upload it to the Lambda. Um, uh, right now, we're, we're actually doing some like AWS CLI to, uh, to actually do the uploads, because uh, Salt, uh, just the, the Lambda uh, management uh, modules of Salt were kind of recent, and so we're kind of having to deal with some like old Salts, and, and so we haven't been able to do that. Um, uh, versioning and aliasing. Uh, Lambda has some cool things. Uh, it will create a new version um, each time you upload a new code base. Uh, and then you can point an alias at a particular version. So this let us, um, uh, one, we can like we can change our Lambda and we're not gonna impact users. We know that they're gonna keep using the, uh, the same good version of our Lambda. Uh, and then um, if we make a version incompatibility changes, we can have just two pointers and then point, point uh, clients to the new version. Um, uh, actually deploying the client out to users' laptops. Um, we have a, a dev environment that all, uh, thank you. Uh, all of our uh, employees get set up with um, basically day one when they start Lyft, uh, and part of that is installing the Blessed Client, uh, getting their, their uh, AWS credentials uh, sitting on their laptop, and uh, being able to SSH in. Uh, we, we, it sets up in a virtual environment because it's a Python script running all of our users' laptops, uh, and then it's just a script that gets generated through a, a pip install. Um, uh, we have to ensure the client is actually called. So if, if we only get a 30 minute certificate, we have to actually make sure that the, uh, the bus client is invoked whenever the user needs to SSH. So the way we do that is with, um, with two ways. We, we alias SSH, so if a user just types in SSH to their, their host, uh, the, we actually invoke a wrapper script that uh, invokes bless first. Uh, optionally, you know, maybe ask the user for their MFA if they need to, uh, and then uh, goes ahead and uh, runs bless to, to get the recent cert. Uh, we also put a match exec call, which is kind of a more recent, I think it's uh, OpenSSH 6.1-ish, maybe it was 5.9, I forget when uh, they actually put this uh, thing in, uh, but that actually lets the SSH uh, itself go and invoke uh, a command when SSH is run, and that picks up things like rsync and all the other uh, commands that we didn't want to alias, um, so that was nice. Um, we push out. A client, uh, so again, speaking of security engineer, I'm like, auto-updating, auto this is kind of scary. But um, when, you know, operationally, we push out this, we, we get all of our users to go uh, update this, uh, we really needed a way to actually be able to push out changes, push out you know, security updates, those types of things, to our users. So we did build in auto-updating. Uh, so every seven days, basically, the agent checks back in, pulls down a fresh copy of it. Um, and this is not in our open source version, but in the, the version we're doing, um, we actually check a GPG signature uh, and, and we, uh, we check out the, the most recent valid signature uh, tag. All right, uh, so again, operationally, uh, you know, we want this to be fast. Uh, we really were concerned that if we push this out, if it takes like seconds every time the, the user invokes SSH, uh, this is not gonna be tenable. Uh, you know, if you're responding to a page at 2 a.m., waiting for five seconds uh, is not an option. Uh, so we need everything to work really fast. Uh, so we had to end up caching a lot of things. So we, we do cache our KMS off token for um, 60 minutes. Uh, the user uh, credentials are cached for 18 hours. Uh, so basically the user has to put in their MFA once every 18 hours. And, uh, and yeah, our, our certificates are good for 30 minutes. Um, all right, so just talking about a few of kind of the limitations and the challenges that we, we ran into as we were um, rolling this out. Um, so again, uh, 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 one, Lambda, so we were actually the, one of the first teams at uh, Lyft to be using Lambda heavily. Um, there were some kind of toy projects, but basically we were the first ones to really do it. So we didn't know how Lambda was gonna fail for uh, uh, us, and we really didn't want to fail in the middle of another outage and have teams locked out of their boxes. So. Uh, we, know, we knew we needed to run in two regions, uh, so we, we set up uh, in US 1, which is where we run everything. We run a lot of other things in uh, US West uh, 1, uh, but that the AWS doesn't give us Lambda there, so we had to run in uh, uh, US West 2. Not a big deal, but uh, that was just kind of a weird thing we hit. Um, 
we did know that if Lambda totally fails um, across all regions, then we needed some way to get into our boxes. So we, uh, we actually pushed two uh, CA fingerprints to all of our boxes, uh, and the, the second one uh, is kept by the security team. And so if we need to, we could go in and, and actually manually issue SSH certificates to our users uh, if, if for some reason all Lambdas everywhere have gone down. That has not happened yet. We've actually been very happy with performance of Lambda. Uh, it's also pretty cheap, um, so it's actually been a, a really good uh, use of our time and resources. Uh, and when the great DNS thing happened last September and uh, East Region basically went down, uh, we could just, uh, we didn't automatically fail over, but uh, users were still able to hit the West Region and uh, get SSH certificates, so that was, that was good. Um, other issues we've hit, uh, KMS uh, rate limits. Um, AWS uh, recently changed how they do the rate limiting. So it's, uh, you're actually at a flat cap, uh, 100 encrypts or decrypts per account now, uh, which was really disappointing to us. Uh, used to be uh, rate limited by key, and so we could, we knew that you know if, if we failed because of a rate limit, we could always go to another uh, KMS key in a different region. Uh, and so now we're, we're actually capped on that, and that's something we've been very disappointed by. Uh, but we're trying to figure out ways around that. Um, uh, AWS MFA, we thought all of our users had uh, a good uh, AWS, uh, their, their MFA token uh, set up with their, their account. Uh, when we actually rolled this out, we realized a lot of users had set this up when they onboarded, never actually used uh, two-factor for anything. Uh, so we actually, it's been a, uh, something that we had to, as a security team, we suddenly had to actually set up 2FA for uh, basically our entire data science team and a couple other uh, engineering teams that didn't, uh, that didn't MFA much. Um, uh, speaking of our, our data scientists, apparently we thought Python was standard across platforms. Um, at Lyft, we, most engineers use Macs. Uh, we have some Linux, uh, not much Windows. But we thought Python, it's, it's, it's standard. Uh, but it turns out it's not. Um, so yeah, data scientists like have Anaconda and other weird things that uh, say they're Python. They, they take over Python on their the user's laptop, but uh, it's, it's not Python, and it causes all sorts of issues. Um, so as a result, we're actually uh, considering possibly porting all this to Go, uh, just because Python's been one of the struggles that we've had. Um, unconventional shells, you know, we try to alias things, but then fish like comes along, and aliases don't really work the same way, so it's been, it's been a challenge. Um, photo libraries, uh, when we were running on Lambda, uh, the, the uh, uh, AWS, um, they can go and upgrade your photo libraries whenever they feel like it, uh, so that's, we've been hit by that a couple times. Oh yeah, and we cache our, our MFA token. Not, not a huge fan of that. So what does this look like now? Um, basically, a uh, user gets their, their AWS credentials. Um, uh, they download the Blessed Client as part of their development uh, environment, uh, and they're immediately able to SSH into all of our servers, uh, which is awesome. Uh, if we need to deprovision, uh, then we can just disable their uh, IAM account, and uh, they're really locked out. So um, lots of problems solved. Yay. Um, we felt good about that. And um, that's the end. And yeah. All right, thank you. So here's your gift from Fitbit. Thank you.